welcome to Pitch a Palooza! <laughs> Woo! All right, I'm going to go through the rules of Pitch a Palooza. No. First, you're going to introduce. First, I'm going to. See, that's my wife, okay? <laughs> Just so you know. She's going to be telling me what to do throughout the, uh, uh, this, <laughs> this event, and I don't have a problem with that. I just want to say, this is a, a really special panel we today. Panel. We've had Kate on our panel before, yes. and she was awesome. Amazing. And Jane is uh, one of our very yes. favorite people in publishing, who we think has just uh, the most incredible information for authors, and we encourage everybody to read everything that she's ever yes. written. Yes. So and there's the new that. book that's coming out, yep. absolutely. Yeah, um, it came out. Came actually, out, yeah. just so came out. We want to introduce a very special person who I think probably everyone in this room knows because she is the queen of networking. <laughs> and that is Ellie Lennon. <laughs> who won Pitchapalooza two years ago and who has her first book coming out in October. And we're inviting her up because we want her to tell a two-minute version of this journey because it's incredibly informative and helpful. Hi, my name is Ellie Lannan, and you may have heard I have a oh. book coming out in October. It's called Amongst the Liberal Elite. And I won Pitchpalooza last time, which was amazeballs and very <laughs> weepy, and I cursed. Let's just, sorry. Um, the thing that I do want to say is everybody keeps saying, like, who's going to win, who's going to win, whatever. If you make it on the stage, you are already won because everyone will hear how amazing you are like everyone here is and just two seconds of and no offense Jane and Kate I haven't heard you <laughs> any you're wonderful I love you obviously <laughs> but any feedback that these two give you is just going to make you so much stronger and better and rooted and I'm rooting for all of you at the end thank, thank you, you. okay now I'm going to explain the rules. Okay, so we are going to pick from this basket. Um, oh, I should get the basket. Uh, we're going to pick <laughs> names um, uh, one by one. And when your name is picked, uh, you will come up here, and you will get <coughs> one minute. Okay? You will be cut off literally mid-sentence. People say, why do you only get a minute? Seems cruel and unusual. I can't explain my whole opus in a minute. You had better be able to explain what your book is in a minute or you are in big trouble. And in fact, um, we've gone all over the country and people tell us amazing stories in a minute. In fact, at a Pitch Palooza recently, a woman made my wife cry in 11 seconds. Yeah. I'm married to her and I've never been able to do that, okay? <laughs> um, so, when you get done with your one minute, stay up there. We're going to critique your pitch in a kind and gentle way. <laughs> No one's going to ask you if you got your hair cut in a Cuisinart. No one's going to do that. We're here to help everyone in this room get successfully published. That is our goal as the book doctors. So you get your minute. You get critiqued. Uh, at the end of the Pitchapalooza, we will announce a winner. And that winner gets an introduction to an agent or a publisher who is right for your work. And you know, countless people have gotten um, published, not just from winning Pitch of Lose It, but just from participating. Um, and we should do our pitch, oh, okay. because we want to show you what a pitch looks like. Okay. Right? okay. Ready? Yeah. The, the essential, essential guide, guide to getting, getting your book published is a step-by-step, blow-by-blow explanation of how, how to take an idea you're passionate about, about make a book out of it, get it published, it. I have never met, David has messed up a number One of times. Time. I've never messed up. Get it okay, published. get it published. Get it published. And deliver, deliver it into, into the, the hands, hands, heads, and hearts of readers all, all over the world. world. Thank you, David! That was embarrassing. She's going to feel bad about that okay. for the rest of I the am. weekend, I yeah. swear. And it's okay, right? <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. Why shouldn't we? All right. I'm calling the first two there names. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to pitch. It's hard to go first. Let's give her a huge... So, as, as a part of that, um, I'm an opera singer. So I can get up on a stage okay. and I can sing like La Boheme, but this, this is really a whole scary. other thing. <laughs> now I'm like, oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Go. You ready? Yeah, yeah, I am ready. Okay. Bless his. Wow. Take this. Hi, I'm character. California too. Hi. 
on planes and on trains and at conferences by three kids and a hill family. Uh, what? No. Wait till you find out how he died, too. Well, this is a crazy ass story. This is incredible. It's, my life. Um, <laughs> it's weirdly relevant right today. When you mention so many different elements, sometimes it dilutes the power of the pitch. So you want to have a very focused um, narrative arc. Like We feel like you're going on a very particular journey. So be careful about mentioning so many elements that we lose the thread. You're going to show the uh, reader, whether it's an agent or the reader on the page, you're fun with wordplay, but in your pitch, you got to give me the facts. To put a piece together for a national publication like the New York Times or the Washington Post on what the heart of this is about right. and to get that kind of big reaction that I would expect something like this would get. When you say something like observations and outtakes, to yeah. me as an agent that says no narrative. And so, I wrote those words down because yeah. those are like death yeah. words. No yeah. one wants to hear we that. Want, yes. It's much easier to sell a narrative. You need yes. a story than okay. like random things I have thought once. Go Listen, on. your, your pitch is like a poem. Every word is precious because you have so few of them. Don't tell us things we already know gotcha. for everybody. Don't tell us you're funny. Make us laugh. Don't tell us your book is sad. Make us cry. Don't tell us it's thrilling. Make our heart pound. It's like those people who wear shirts that say sexy on them. <laughs> Let me be the judge of that if you don't mind. You don't have to tell us it's funny because you made us laugh. Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's the difference between telling us what your book is about and what happens. Yes. Right. Your book is yeah. about a bunch of abstractions, yes. love and adultery and finding yourself, but your book is about a girl and a boy and a boy and a boy and a boy. And we want what it's about, we don't want the abstractions. Okay. And use the word theme. I highly advise you don't use, use the word theme. theme. We, for everybody who's writing a book with characters in it and a story, the first thing you have to do is get us to fall in love with that person. I like her, but I haven't fallen in love with her yet. And usually we, people do that by having the hero do some sort of selfless act. Like in the beginning of Hunger Games, Katniss Everdeen, who's really kind of an ass, really. <laughs> She's prickly and... But she says, I will die for my sister. So we go, oh my God, we love her. Throughout that whole series, people are going, oh, you're the person who's going to die for the sister. So we love her. And that's a simplistic way of explaining it. But I didn't have that moment where I went, oh my God, I love her so much. That, to me, is the missing element in, in this pitch here. Because everything else, it's all good. I mean, this, I can just see this on the bookshelves. Thanks. Good job. Yeah, I, I'll just add one, one other. I would like to feel more of the voice yeah. in the pitch. To me, it had slightly a bit of book report-ness in it, rather than giving that flavor. When you were done, I was like, I want to know more. Me too, I did. I <laughs> and that's, did. that's what you want every pitch to end with. That's the feeling. Every what pitch happens next? is, I want to read your book. A memoir is not a deposition. So if you say something that's not maybe perfectly true, but it's as true as you know it can be, then it's still a memoir. If you are making things up to better the story, then it's a novel and you can't call it a memoir. Okay. A memoir is a book of memory. Memoir. And by its very definition, memory is faulty. Everyone remembers different things. You will remember this very differently than I oh, will I today. I remember this for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your, your pitch is your audition to show us what a beautiful writer you are, how you can sling words together and tell a story and create a character economically. And so many times we get, I'm not saying this about you, but it, it had a little bit of that book report kind right. of feeling like, and then this happened and that happened. It's like what I did this summer. Whereas, you know, it needs right. to be the best thing that you have ever written. This, if you think about how this works on, this is memoir, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think how this works on the other end, the reader goes into the bookstore and says, I want a memoir about a thing that relates to me, because yeah. we read memoir to look at a mirror. Um, then if it's a bunch of stuff that happened to you, well, then that happened to you, and I don't know how it relates to me. So I want to go into a bookstore and find a, you know, a parenthood memoir or a, you know, find a genealogy memoir or a cancer memoir or whatever. So if we don't know what flavor your memoir is, so more then we can't, we don't know that we want it. Okay. Are you looking for a cancer memoir? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I'll just add quickly, I think it's a risk to have a pitch where it's not clear from the beginning that it's about you. 
I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. wrong, and mm -hmm. I think it worked. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think just for those listening, I think it's a huge risk to only make it clear at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to feel that sense of mystery or thriller through the pitch. Nouns and verbs, not adjectives and abstractions. This is a story about, I think that's a red flag, yeah, like no, anywhere in a totally pitch. Totally that's great. All right, because if the bulk of what you're trying to say is right after that, you're probably not telling enough about what happens. Yes. You're just focused on the themes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get pitches all the time. Uh, I'm going to pitch you seven books. Uh, there's a cookbook and a book of poetry, <laughs> and it, that, that, that's, you and don't do pitch one. And yeah. a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> pitch one book. Just a few more details to make them come to life so we go, ooh, I can't wait to see the rest of that. Mm -hmm. Your comp titles it, tell people how much you know about your category of the bookstore. I was just going to say structurally, I think what happened is that you started talking about the character in the story, then you kind of talked about yourself, and then you went back to the story. So I think that's one of the reasons that lost right. momentum. So if you just move your bio probably to the end, move you would fix end. it. Uh, if you're writing this, if this is going to reflect what you put in query letters to agents, don't start with a question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we just see it every, it's not wrong, we just see it Everybody hates seven it. times okay. out of ten. Okay. It was We've actually. Heard so many people say that. Yeah. For all of us, we want climaxes at the end, not in the middle. Um, <laughs> I guess it depends on, you know, what you're doing later. Uh, <laughs> Our esteemed judges are now going to judge. They're going to debate who is the winner. And as they do, I would like a gigantic Irma Bombeck round of applause for everybody who picked. <laughs> this is one of the things I love about doing uh, Pitch of Blues here. There's so many great stories. I feel like there was a dozen books that I could see absolutely on the shelves. It's a new Netflix show or however that you're going to manifest. But there was just some amazing pitches that I was really impressed by. Our judges are back. <laughs> All right, people. As always, lots of interesting pitches, great ideas, some really great performances, everything. But we do have a winner. And that winner is Liz Dubelman. Yeah. No way, she said. Yes way. Stand up, for God's sake. No. Are you kidding, she says. We're not kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So really, really terrific um, story, character, you really got us all wanting to know what happens in this novel. So terrific job. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Another beautiful weekend. But it's a good, Irma. good, good kind of exhausted. But here's say. the thing: we kind of messed up and we forgot to get pictures of the crowds at Pitch Blues. Yeah, I think there were like 600 people there or something. No, there Some was over crazy. a thousand people. Six thousand. Six thousand. Six thousand. Sixty thousand. Which you're not going to see because we forgot to take the picture. No. So you can't see my mouth. Uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> So, but we heard some really great pitches. We had we did. great panelists. They were super fun. Kate McKean, Jane Friedman. Jane Friedman. And um, uh, and people. I mean, our class went super good. Yeah. We had great people there. We met so many nice we people. We met so many great people. It was yeah. so fun. Yeah. And it looks like we might get invited to Windsor, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of really. This was fun and recommend everyone go to the Irma Bombeck Writers Festival because it was so fun. We're back to New Jersey. Back to New Jersey. See you at the bookstore. We're home. <sighs> We're home. We're home. How is your Irma Bombeck? Fantastic. Fantastically tastic. It really was great. But we haven't done this in a while and it's like a muscle. If you don't use it and then you. <laughs> You go like, wow. I, do you feel it's wiped out of that? Wiped out. Yeah. Like, it's 10 o'clock at night. I feel like, okay. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you to Terry Risby, first of all.
and all of the incredible people who helped put this together.